Hi everyone, Paul back again uh, for video for day two of the 2017 Cheltenham Festival. As I'm recording this, day one is about to start in four and a half hours. Uh, been up since the early hours, couldn't sleep. Very exciting times. Love the festival, as everyone should. Uh, but day two kicks off with the Neptune Novices Hurdle. Race, really good race. But unfortunately, again, once again on this, the game of Willie Mullins Bingo continues. Even as I'm doing this video, he's got over 40% of the field. And I think he probably have two or three runners. But it's making things very, very difficult uh, to know what he's going to do. And that's going to have a huge burr in on the market. Uh, looking at the Willie Mullins horses, Let's Dance could end up running in this one, I think. And this is a really improving horse. Uh, I've got a feeling this is a trip. Um, she looks to be better for stepping up to two and a half mile. Um, and Shattered Love, who's quite well fancied in the market here, about 12 to 1, is completely held by Let's Dance on form. Um, the only worry I've got is on the previous course run. She came 4th of 15, which ain't bad, but beaten by 14 and a half lengths. That's a real hammer, and that's pretty much being beaten like a, like jumping the last as the others are nearly finishing type approach. So that is the slight worry I've got on Let's Dance. Uh, the horse I really fancy in this actually is a Willie Mullins horse and it's Bacardi's uh, improved. He didn't look natural hurdler at the start of the season, but he's improved. And the step up in trip seems to be exactly what he needs. He battled away last time and just fought off, fought off, fought off, pulling away nicely at the end. Uh, he was placed in the bumper last year. Uh, and once again, we're going to find out how good that bumper form is in the first two or three races at Cheltenham this year. Um especially with the likes of Bally Andy running, etc. and stuff like that. But I think Bacardi's is improving, and he, this is the type of horse that Willie Mullins brings. He's, he is like a York Hill who won this last year, and I think Bacardi's is a, a decent bet, about 4-1. to one. He could even, At the moment, he could be an each-way bet to nothing. I can't see him not being in the top three if he stands up. Uh, the talking horse of the winter has been Neon Wolf, the 7-4 to four current favourite. And to be fair, you can understand why he's looked really impressive on every start. Seems versatile with regards to ground. Um, and, you know, he's for me, it's between him and Bacardi's. The reason I'm going for Bacardi's over him is because he's probably a little more battle-hardened than Neon Wolf. Neon Wolf hasn't taken that much racing. And more importantly, he's never run at the course before when Bacardi's has actually run really well here. So, uh, he put Neon Wolf, he's a good horse. And he's going to be a big danger, I think, and rightful favourite. Uh, Messia de Zobo is an interesting one because he actually beat Bally Andy at Sandown. Um, but the big concern I've got is he was even money and got beaten at this trip the last time out. Um, and he looked to be cruising and then started floundering and got run down late on. So I think this trip again with the hill, I can't be 100% convinced. There might have been something not fully right with him last time, but I can't be 100% convinced that this is exactly what he needs. A horse I really like, and he's a big price as well, is Mona Lee. Um, a horse I love, and he's in all of my multiples and stuff that I've done, is Death Duty. And Mona Lee came second to him last time. He's a very, very tough horse, this. You could see from his build, I've been watching some of the video replay, really, really strong back end. Looks like he's definitely going to make a chaser probably next year, but he's a very, very uh, strong, tough horse. Um, he all, If invitation only for Willie Mullins ends up running here as well, he's... Pretty well fancied. He holds him on back form. Uh, and I think that this two and a half mile trip is what Monley needs. He's entered in the three miler as well. I think the Albert Bartlett and others. But if he runs at this trip, this is the one that he would be a big danger in for me. Uh, you've also got to mention in this as well, Willoughby Court. He's improving with each run. Uh, but the one worry I've got is, um, is that all of his best form is on soft. Um, he got beaten at even money. Um, on good ground and got hammered in fact and that would be a worry if this drought ground continues to drought i think it's a really good renewal of the neptune this year but from one two three i'm going for bacardi's to beat neon wolf and monoly i think will be very close as well to make up the three uh, the rsa chase is next and it's always uh it's well it's an interesting race this rsa because not many horses win the rsa and then go on to be superstar horses really since i think the last one would have realistically been denman the others who have won it it, I don't know. It, they just haven't possibly peaked the way that they should. I don't know why. Uh, nature of the game, I guess. And maybe that's part of the reason why, like, Coney Grease owners a few years ago bypassed it to go to the Gold Cup and Thistle Cracks were going to do it. Um, but we play with the cards we've got and the favourite now at 5-2, which is plenty short enough for me, is Might Bite for Nicky Henderson. He's a good horse. 
I think he's a very good horse. Uh, he would have won the Corto Star, which was the Felton Novice at Kempton, if he stayed up. Um, but there's a couple of things that worry me on this. One, he's got no course form. I know nobody has, really, but that is a bit of a worry. And two, with the exception of Corto Star, really, who, let's just face facts, is a different world to any horse that we've seen in recent times. The horses, like at Kempton, the way he travelled so well at Kempton and stuff, and he was quick in a way... It, for me, Kempton form doesn't always translate to Cheltenham. Like, Sylvan Yaku Conti won a raft of gold, uh, King George's, and then, like in the Gold Cup, would look like he was going to win, come in the last, and then falter away. Um, Don Cossack fell. I think that's an interesting one. Don Cossack fell in the King George last year, but he was getting scrubbed. It was all just happening a bit too fast for him. And when he fell, Mike Bite was doing it so well. It's leaving me this impression he might be a bit of a speed horse. And that would worry me slightly. The other thing I would say as well is he likes to bowl along front running and he's not going to get the chance to do that as freely as he'd like to because there's a horse in here called Acapella Bourgeois for one. Uh, he is a huge front runner. You can almost ignore his last run. He won it by 20 lengths. They just let him go off like 50 lengths in the lead. It, and I don't know why it's happened in Ireland so much. And then nothing got near him. It was oh, tantamount to race fixing really. They just let him go and that was it. Um, and I don't know how good his form is. Um, I don't even know if he's that much of a stayer, to be honest, as well. But the problem is, I think he's going to go and take Mike Bite on up top. A horse I really like is Alpha Desobo, who got placed in the uh, stayers hurdle last year. He made a seamless transition to fences. It looked really good. The biggest worry I've got is last time out, pulled up, burst blood vessels, been off since. I think he's classy enough to go and take this, but I think he's probably, yeah... I'm, I'm second guessing myself here. I think he's probably short enough at about five to one after a problem like that. I'm not saying he can't bounce back, but if he was about in tens, elevens, he would have interested me five and a half to one. I'm not saying he can't win, but it's a worry after like an injury such as bursting blood vessels. A horse I really like though is uh, Disco. He's improving, given his breeding. I think he'll be better on better ground. The trip is an unknown, but the way he picked up last time and just galloped all the way to the line suggests I think three miles is completely within his um, range, and I think Disco is going to be really, really close. Uh, you've got to mention Royal Vacation too. The problem is with him, he would have been absolutely miles behind Mike Bite at Kempton. Even though he won that race, Mike Bite fell, and he was left on his own. Um, but it's this course I think is more him. I think where Mike Bites more of a speed horse, I think this one's more of a slogger. But I think he's just shy of top class. The horse I'm actually coming down on the side of to back though on this is also trained by Mike Bites trained Nicky Henderson. But I'm going for Whisper. Uh, it just look back through his Cheltenham form. It's unbelievable. It just so, he just loves this horse. And last year, you can put a line through last season. There must have been so many problems with this horse. Because um, this season he's just looked a completely different. Um, he's looked a completely different animal, and I've got one quote here. I'm just going to go and find it. Uh, here we go. Yeah, when I was looking at it, Whisper, Whisper is going to be going over fences this season. We've always liked him, and he's got. We always thought he would make into an excellent chaser. Last season he was inundated with performance, illness, and a multitude of other problems. But we seem to have him back on form this season. That was from the start of this year, and I think he's proven that that is a fact. Um, he's got great course form. He gets on really well with Davy Russell. And I think one thing you know about him is he is a big stayer as well, Whisper. He's got that. The way he's done it in, like, entry hurdles, he stepped up to three mile and looked good. I think Whisper's the answer in this race. It looks a decent renew for my one, two, three. I'm going for Whisper to be Disco and Alpha Days Oboe. The Coral Cup is really hard to sum up here because many of these horses are also in the Martin Pipe uh, hurdle. But one horse is jumping off the page, rightfully so, and that is Tombstone of Gordon Elliott. He's classy. He absolutely destroyed Jetski last time. Um, he was fourth in the Supreme Novice last year, and I think that form's pretty solid with the likes of um, Altior and Min, etc. The way with Jetski last time, he got beat the time before, and he tried to come late and use like a turn of four. Last time he was more prominent and he just ground him down. So I think this Coral Cup trip with the hill is ideal for him if they race him close to the pace. He's on a great mark. And do you know what? I know he's only five to one. I think that's a great price. I think if it wasn't Cheltenham and it was just a run of them, a handicap of the same level in Leopardstown, Nace or somewhere, he'd be about two to one. I think it's a good price. Uh, Modus for Paul Nichols is in there. He's improving all the time. 
Um, I think the trip is fine. He's got top weight, but this, this again, this handicap is so condensed. I don't think the weight's going to make that much difference in the grand scheme of things. And the thing is with Modus, he's had quite a tough season, I think. I think he's been in some real slogs already. And I just wonder for the rest of the season. El Bandita's in there for Nick uh, for Paul Nichols again. Good horse. He's won at the course. He's on a nice mark. I just wonder if he's got the class to go and take something like this. That's the worry I've got. Um, another one that's really interesting me is a horse called Automated, and there's been money for him in the last few days. Uh, he has shown absolutely nothing all season until his last run, when he suddenly burst into life and won really, really well traveled so well for miles off the pace and came just slicing through and in the coral cup where they can go hell for leather i think that's the type of horse sometimes you need um and i just want it wonder if he's being brought to the boil for this he's into about 11 to 1 now and that he's starting to interest me um coral cup as always has got a multitude of uh jp mcmanus horses the ones i'm contact um, conscious of here i wonder if hargam will go a previous festival placer all of his form is on good ground He's 25 to 1. Now, he, I will be putting, even if it's only £2.50 each way on him at 25, if, he, if he's on just as like a sporting bet. Because all of his races this season have been on soft and he's been slammed. He's had one run on good ground and he won. Uh, and I think he's a huge price. I think because he's just been getting caned in soft races, that that's the price he is. If he runs in this, I think he's got a lot of class. He could be a huge price. Uh, another one for the uh, contingent of J.P. McManus's console to tie. Um, he's had two big runs behind brain power this year, and I think that's um, pretty good form. He seems to need a step up in trip, or maybe this hill will help. He's got a nice weight, and I think he's relatively lightly raced. I think console to tie could be um, a really good uh, runner in this. No comment. Another horse, J.P. McManus. I think Philip Hobbs trains this one. He's improving. And his one loss he had, he got stuffed by a horse called Robin Rowe. Now, Robin Rowe was, I think, favourite for this race. And the form's been frank, because next time Robin Rowe would have won a Group 1, I'm convinced of it. He was held up, he was scything through, and he fell two out. And based on back form, no comment would have a great uh, chance. And Er Horse won. I don't know what race he's going to go for. But he missed the Imperial Cup to run here. They said, we're not going to go for the bonus. He said, we could win the Imperial Cup, or we could go to Cheltenham. So they picked... Cheltenham so whatever race he runs in he's got to be of interest um I think this race is the most likely to suit him with a big frantic pace for him to aim at so he will be of interest if he runs in this I think it's a really good renewal the Coral Cup always shop around for more places you can sometimes get five or even six places on this race in previous year but from one two three I'm going for Tombstone to be automated and I'll put no comment in there because I love Robin Rowe and I think that form has been franked uh, highlight of day two is the Queen Mother Champion Chase, and this is a one-horse race. It's all about Duvan, who's honestly, I think, one of the best two-mile chasers I've ever seen. I think he is absolutely unbelievable, and I'm gutted that we've been robbed of the chance to see Duvan versus Sprinter Sacra. Um, obviously, Sprinter Sacra regained his crown last year, was just back to his absolute best, um, and that would have been a race for the ages. I also wish Nicky Henderson threw Altior in. Uh, and I thought that was going to happen. To be honest, I was so gutted. I thought that was going to happen when he lost um, when he lost Sprinter Sacra, but it's not going to happen. And basically, Duvan is going to win this doing handstands, even if he makes a like Altior, if he makes a mistake at every fence. As long as he stands up, he wins. It's as easy as that. But there's a good each way place market. Fox Norton's interested. Um, he's been really, really good, consistent all season. Uh, but two pieces of form them down. One, he was destroyed by Duvan in the Arkle last year, which there's no, you know what I mean? There's no um, shame in that, really. Duvan is a different class, and he got absolutely battered by Altior on the latest again. Two once-in-a-lifetime horses. Put a line through them. Very, very solid. Wins his first year races, runs well. He's won at the course, so Fox Norton deserves to be second favourite. Um, Special TR has been a subject of a bit of each race support on this. Um... This year he hasn't impressed me. I've, I've liked him in the past. His jumping hasn't seemed as good. He won at Kempton at Christmas in the Desert Orchid, but Sierra de Grugy fell early. And then he just about beat some pretty average horses, really, after that. And then the bit that get, he's not getting any younger. And the bit that gets me is special Tiara is 12 to 1. But then in the Clarence House next time, he, got, he came fifth. And miles ahead of him was a horse called Top Gamble, who's also in the Queen Mother here. 
uh, and that's Clarence Harris because it was rerouted from Ascot was over course and distance. Yet special tiara is twelve to one, and Toff Gamble's forty to one or thirty three to one in places. I don't understand the discrepancy in the market. I know people are gonna say, yeah, he prefers better ground, prefers this. Toff Gamble goes on both grounds. So for me, I'd be having a bet on Toff Gamble at thirty three forty to one and with bet for over special tiara myself. Um, if you want a consistent horse, I'm not saying he's going to win or even get placed, but he's going to run his heart out and run very, very solid, and that's God's own. He just always seems to run well at the festival. He's placed at the festival before. I think he's one rung below the very, very top class. He's won, his, he's won some good races, but it's usually when other horses are either over the top at the end of the season or early on in the season when they're probably not fully wound up. But he does well at the festival, and that's all you can ask for. It's hardly a vintage renewal of Queen Mother, but I hope Duvan shows something special similar to what Mastermind had did about 10 years ago. My one, two, three here is Duvan from Fox Norton and God's Own. The highlight of day two, for me, it's got to be, um, is the cross-country chase. And this is all about the horse that I call my boy. Absolutely love him to pieces, and that is Martin Keithley's Any Currency. Uh, tipped him up in this the last two years, once where he was rotten beat on the line and then that amazing day last year when he won only to for me and i know it's you know it's one of those things he got the race taken off him five months afterwards over the most trivial ridiculous thing you'll ever hear but that was then this is now and while all the money has been for Cantlow's now 15 to 8 which is ludicrously short price for a cross-country race or anything like that and the jp mcmanus contingent as far as i'm concerned any currency is the champion Woody is the horse they've all got to beat, even though he's 14. And you can't say that you are the cross-country champion, in my eyes, until you go through him. Um, he was the rightful winner last year. He is, a, well, he is a cross-country expert. I think he only once, when he wasn't right, he's finished out the places in the cross-country. Even last time out, when I'm sure Martin left plenty to work on, he came third, giving weight to Cantlow, etc., Dicky Johnson as well, not his usual rider, uh, but also took it very easy from two out when he knew the winning chance had gone. So he was only, I think, 10 or 11 lengths behind Cantlow, giving him a load of weight. But Cantlow was in a driving finish to the line. And uh, I think any currency will at least get a lot closer than that. The bit you're forgetting as well is Cantlow ran in this race last year and Woody absolutely battered him. It's as simple as that. Cantlow looks a better horse this year, though. Uh, he is um, a course and distance winner. He was a good second last time. Um, but how good that winner is, I don't fully know. The biggest worry I would have if it was back in Cantlow, especially at 15 to 8 now, is look how bad his form is in the spring. He does nothing in the spring. He's been to two or three festivals and been fancied at all of them and beaten out of sight in all of them. And uh, that would have to be a huge price around a horse and taking 15 to 8 on. There's been so much money this week as well for cause of causes. Again, JP McManus owned. Been tons of money for him. But last time out, he ran behind Cantlow in any currency. He got beaten something like 47 lengths. And the reason afterwards was apparently he didn't like the course. Yet now he's three to one second favourite. So either that was a lie and there was something wrong last time or they were schooling him and just deliberately anchored him out the back just to get a look. And then I don't know what the plan was. But for me, I love cause of causes. I tipped him up and he won last year. But not for me. Uh, more interest for me out of the, uh, the McManus contingent is Oven yet. He was going really well when slipped up over the course and distance where Cantlow came second and any currency came third. I think he's a good price at 7-1. to one. We won't fully know if he will stay up that hill because he came out a week later and won at Punchestown. But we won't fully know if he stays that trip up that hill. Quantas of Easing loves it round here. He was carried out two years ago when he would have gone mighty, mighty close to Rivage Door. I'll put money on that. He would have gone very, very close. Uh, he was placed in this last year, but then came last in his one comeback run over hurdles this year and has been off since, and that is a massive concern. You've also got to mention, because I think he's a classy horse, Sausalito Sunrise for Philip Hobbs, but he's had a shocking season. Um, but he's a good stayer. Generally, he jumps well, and if he takes to this course, he could have a big chance. But I'm sticking with the proven course form, the proven horses, and my one, two, three in the cross country, uh, I will never waver from any currency. Any currency one, uh, Overnyat two, and based on this season's form, Cantlow at three. Uh, the Fred Winter, usually it's quite an easy horse for me to pick in this because I just go and pick an unraced or a Paul Nichols French horse that he's never run that's thrown in. 
but he hasn't got one this year, so he's ruined my plan. Um, this it looks really competitive this year. Long calls in it for Tony Martin, and uh, there's he's had no real form really, but the money continues to come and come and come. Um, there is a saying that has been going around Twitter as well, known as the Tony Martin handbrake, whereby the handbrake comes off at Cheltenham or a big meeting. Is this one of them? We will soon find out. Uh, a horse I really like is Divin Burr for Nicky Henderson. He's only had one UK run, but he beat Master Blue Eyes very easily. And that horse has gone on to do a lot since. So on collateral form, he has got to go mighty close. Um, Don Perignon de Lise as well is in there. He has done really, really well, but the biggest concern I've got is he's had one run at the course and he got beaten by 17 lengths. I'm not saying it wasn't a one-off, something wasn't right, right wrong or indifferent. Defi de Sul has proved himself to be world-class and has got to probably win the triumph. But that is a huge concern about a horse. I'm not saying he can't turn it around, but I'd rather not really based on that. Dream catching's in for Paul Nichols. Very good horse, but all of his known form for me is on soft ground. I'm not saying he won't go on good, but again, you're taking a risk. A horse who I think is going to go very close at a huge price is Alan King's Dino Velvet. Uh, he was really good earlier in the season. Uh, he won at, I think it was Sandown. He beat a horse of Martin Keithley's called Buckle Street. And that Buckle Street's come out and actually beaten Shantou Village, who was 2-7, to seven, quite well next time out uh, on his last run. Um, and before that, he would have gone, or after that, he would have gone closer over course and distance behind Defi de Soule, but fell at the last. Um, on that form, I think he's got a great chance, and he's around 25-1, to 1, so I wouldn't put people book it, uh, betting on Dino Velvet, to be honest. I am sticking with a Paul Nichols horse in this, though, and he actually runs in the same colour as his winner last year, Diego de Charmil, and that is a horse called Dolos. He's a really solid performer. He can front run. He can be held up. He's definitely a chaser to look at again, but he looks very, very strong. His best form's on better ground, and from the rumours I've been hearing from people in the know, Sam Twiston Davis is going to pick this horse, and I think that'll be the indication you need to know. Um, it's a very hard race, with, to be honest with you, it's, it's, it's just always a hard race. But I'm happy to go with a 1, 2, 3 of Dolos from Divine Bear and Dino Velvet in that one. And now the final race on day two is the Champion Bumper, which has been harvested many, many times by Willie Mullins. But I've got a feeling this year there might be a fly in the ointment. And that fly in the ointment is a horse called Western Rider for Warren Greatrix. Really consistent, good form. That's what it's all about. It's better form. And his best performances are on good ground. He's won and got placed on soft, but if you look at his like breathtaking performance, you go, wow, that is on good ground. So I think that's ideal. He's got that ideal profile for the race. He's been in some big fields. He's raced in some decent races. He's had a break, so he's not going there off the back of a load of runs. The season's been well planned out. And last time out, he came second, but was given £23, basically, to a really, really good mare. Um, and he came second. Uh, he's fresh for this. I think he's a type, the hustle and bustle of the race will be perfect. I think Warren Greatchick's a preview even actually said it. And for me, Western Rider at 8-1, to one, that's the bet for me in this race. I do respect Carter McKay, though, for Willie Mullins. All class, travels so well. All of his winter form, though, and French form is on soft ground. Will he go on the good ground? I think he will. He's got the action that suggests he will. But Western Rider, I think, is a bit more proven on that good ground. And again, I'll always tick those boxes. If someone can tick everything that I need more than the other, I don't care if it's favourite or not. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, I like a horse near called Someday for Jesse Harrington too. Made debut in this last um, she made He made the debut this horse in the bumper at the Punchestown Festival last year and came second. So to make a debut in that, you've got to be pretty well regarded. Been lightly raced since. I don't know if that's by design or not, but you've got to take a lot of respect out of that. Um, an interesting horse for me, and I don't understand why it's the price it is, is called West Coast Time. Uh, another one coming over from Ireland. It's actually going to have Aidan Coleman on. I found out you'll, people will find this out in the next day or so. Really, really good debut win. And then was two and a quarter length second to Carter McKay. Now, that's good form in itself, but Carter McKay, it was a four-horse race. They let it run off in the lead and then tried to come from last uh, it was a bad ride by um, one of the O'Brien sisters. I forgot which one it was. Tried to come from last and on off a slow pace, and it should have kicked earlier. There was it, basically everything went wrong in the race. Um, but for me, there was only two and a quarter lengths between the two of them. The race wasn't run to suit. 
Carter McKay is about five to two, eleven to four. West Coast time is sixteen to one, and I think that's a pretty big price. Um, also got to mention another Willie Mullins horse called Next Destination. Quite a nice UK debut, eight to fifteen. Uh, was really an experience, but made up ground late on. Didn't win like an eight to fifteen should, but looked pretty smart. Whether they've got she, she this horse has got the nous for a race like this after one run, only God knows, but we'll soon see. Now, some people in this like to do a huge price. Like I mentioned Battleford last year, which came second, got beaten by Bally Andy, and it's good to throw one in. If you're looking at a punt at something huge, there's a horse that's actually 66 or 80 to 1 in places, and it's called Robin the Raven. Have a look at Robin the Raven. It was really green on UK debut at Bangor, I think it was. Threw the race away, hung right round the bend, hung left, all over the place, ran on quite well, got beaten two and a bit lengths. But I found out it had only been with Kim Bailey for six days before that race. So clearly they'd had no work on it, done nothing. They'd got it and just thrown it straight in to see what they had. So that was pretty impressive. But the next time out, looked a proper stayer on good ground. Still very green, but just came through and ground, 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 got the lead. And then pulled away quite nicely. Has been put away since then. No rumours, no sign of injury problems or anything. And I just wonder if they've got that experience into him, we've built him up. And I'm going to go for this. As I said, I've just looked here now. 10 bet have got 80 to 1 on Robin the Raven. And if you're looking to have a bit of a crazy bet, it might come last. It might just be if you haven't run because it's just not that good. Um, but Robin the Raven, 80 to 1, could give you a bit of run. Uh, but we're going for a 1, 2, 3 here, though. And I'm going for Western Rider to beat Carter McKay to beat West Coast Time. As always, thanks for the comments on the videos. Uh, really appreciated. And uh, yeah, day three will be going up tomorrow. Enjoy day one and day two. See you soon.